Well, good morning. You know, uh, we have some amazing moms and amazing ladies at our church. If you're a lady and are here today and didn't get a bag, make sure you get one on your way out. There's all kind of good stuff in there. And if you don't want it, uh, there's a man you can give it to. He'll probably like the candy. Uh, you know, I know that Mother's Day for a lot of people is hard, you know, whether you lost your mom in the, in the recent uh, history or, or even not. Um, some of you are that way. Some of you did not have good moms. You come to Mother's Day and you're like, I can't celebrate my mom. Here's what I know. And Jackie Brantley, uh, one of my mentors, husband, my, her husband was my mentor. Um, she was raised by her aunt. You know, her aunt was a better mom to her than her mom. And I really believe that God always does that. He sends a person in to be that example to you, that encouragement to you. Now, I have asked this question a thousand times and always gotten, yes, God did that. If you're here today and he hasn't done that, let me know. So I can say I know one person who didn't. But, my, but I really, from talking to enough people, I'm certain that God has allowed somebody to be in that place. And we want to encourage you today, because I think one of the enemy's goals for all of us um, is is to just be discouraged. Now, I'm going to tell you a secret. Um, Women, don't listen. Uh, Men, this sermon, you you look at it, it's about amazing women, and you're like, well, what in the world does that have to do with me? Here's what I'll tell you. These stories we're going to read about amazing women, these points that we're going to talk about, uh, apply to you too. And don't, but don't tell the ladies that. They'll think it's just for them. But they apply to you too. So as we go through this, just recognize that these are practical truths, Old and New Testament, that apply to our lives. Now, here's what I want you to know too. If you're not a mom, you are not less than these other people uh, on Mother's Day. I want you to know that um, even if you feel unappreciated... Even if you feel useless, even if you feel less than, even if you feel not needed, you feel in the way, you feel like you're not as good as somebody else, you wish you were like somebody else, or maybe you even feel stupid. And my mom's watching online. She doesn't like that word. I'm sure I'll hear this afternoon. Maybe today you feel like a failure. I want to tell you who you really are in Christ. You are appreciated by us. By the way, guys, if we appreciate the ladies today, would you just let them know it real quick? Let's just do that. Wait, time out, time out. I I want you to let them know it like you would let them know that your favorite Super Bowl team won. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Much better. I was a little worried that I was going to get in trouble for that anemic anemic response. My wife is having to work today at the hospital, uh, so there are some amazing uh, ladies, and I'm married to one, that's for sure. Uh, We want you to know you're appreciated. I want you to know that you are useful. I want you to know that regardless of how you feel, you are enough. I want you to know that you're needed. I want you to know that you are at just the right place. God has you right where he wants you. He's put you in the ministry with the people that he wants you to be with. I want you to know that you're gifted. I want you to know that you are the person God made. Even if there's jerks in the world that tell you they don't like you, you are who God made you. And then finally, you are not a failure. You're an overcomer in Christ. And I want you to remember that today. The enemy will do his best to discourage you, to make you feel that way. Why? Because then you won't do anything. You'll hide in a corner and you won't use the gifts God's given you. And that's the enemy's entire plan is to not, he doesn't, listen, he doesn't need to destroy us. He just has to distract us. And the way he does that often is how we feel about things. It's not reality. So don't mix up that with reality and let God use you. Because here's what I want you to know, ladies. You inspire us. We're encouraged by you. And so I want you to know that today and not quit in the middle of your journey. So I've got a couple of pictures. My mom let me borrow from her and make sure I take these. Ernie, if these end up in the corner, I'm in trouble. These need to go home today. So this is uh, my dad's side of the family, my grandmother and my grandfather. And this is my mom's side of the family, her mom and dad. These folks, my grandfather, this grandfather, was actually a hobo for a while. Do you know what a hobo is? It's the people who traveled on, uh, not planes, traveled on trains, used to hop trains. By the way, I'm on a lot of Benadryl today. I got stung by a wasp yesterday, and my right arm, I look like Popeye um, with my right arm only. So I wish it was muscle. Ah, 
So my grandfather, he was a hobo. When my grandmother was about 16, they went to get married. In the town they were in, the guy who owned the gas station was the only justice of the peace. So they went to the gas station, and my grandparents were married in a gas station. Yeah. But my grandparents, uh, my mom's parents never uh, uh, went to church, very rarely did. Um, my mom, when she was in middle school, finally got her, uh, my mom had one sister, and so the two girls begged grandpa to go to church, so they came to church, and they, they wanted grandpa to be up front so he could get the whole brunt of everything, so they sat in the front row, and they were so excited that they got my grandfather and my grandmother to come to church, and they were so excited about it, and during the whole sermon, there were people that came in, sat behind them, and the whole time in uh, where my mother could hear them, they complained that my grandfather and grandmother were in their seats. So if you ever wonder why I get aggravated about that, now you know, right? Can you imagine a child who wanted to see their parents come to Christ, and yet some church member is like, you're in my seat. They would rather have somebody go to hell than give up their seat. So let's never be that way. And there's the message. Have a great day. All right. Um, so here's, here's what I, you wish. Yeah, I'll tell you right now what's happening. Some of you were dragged here by your mom. Okay? She said, you want to give me something for Mother's Day? You come with me to church. And, and if I dismissed right now, I would be killed. Because there's a couple things they want you to hear today. So I know how that works. But here's the deal. My mom uh, never had a Christmas tree. She had a Christmas tree one year when she was in high school for one night. My grandfather bought it on Christmas Day, threw it out on the day after Christmas. Or, excuse me, bought it on Christmas Eve, threw it out on Christmas Day. Um, so she made sure we always had the biggest tree we could have. And she lives with us now, and we set up the Christmas tree uh, uh, at the end of October, and I have people write and text me, and let me tell you, none your business You can have some nachos. Nacho problem. Did I say all that out loud? That's the Benadryl talking. Her parents didn't go to church. My mom made sure we sat with her in church. She was made fun of when she got baptized. She encouraged all of us to get baptized and give our lives to Christ. Her parents didn't finish college. While I was a kid, my mom went to college, got her uh, degree, then got her master's degree, then got her specialist degree, and then taught college in Miami. My brother and I one time sat in the balcony at church. We asked mom, mom, can we sit in the balcony? And she said, yes. My mom didn't know in our back pocket was a deck of cards. A deck of cards is kind of like a video game. I don't know, I don't know what to compare. It's like an iPhone. Anyway, so what we did is mom was in the choir that day, so we got up in the balcony of the church, and we got under the pews after church started. We got under the pews, and we played war. Do you remember war? You know, it was a game that goes on forever. So we were playing war during church. And uh, what we didn't realize is mom sitting in the choir could see us underneath that thing. And I think we were killed at least twice on the way home. <laughs> did your mom ever say, don't make me stop this car? My mom had to stop the car a few times, just so you know. The truth is, my mom wanted us to be more than she ever was, to be able to come to church, to know Christ. My grandmother and grandfather both came to Christ before they died, and that's a hallelujah, we get to talk in heaven. But the truth is, what my mom saw as a child, she said, I want my kids to have a better life than I had. I want to encourage them to know Christ. And it's because of a church member that would take a few kids, walk them to church, was going by my mom's house one day when she was about eight years old and came in and asked my grandmother mother and grandfather, can I bring your girls to church with us? And surprisingly, they said yes. And so whoever that person was, we don't know their name, we don't know who they were, that's the person that got my mom the ability to start coming to church to get out of old ways of doing things and to find out who Jesus was and change her life. And she has become an amazing woman. 
And there's some amazing women in this room. Listen, right now there's somebody looking at you, ladies, and saying you're amazing. You may not feel amazing, but it's not how you feel that's true. By the way, husbands, if you're next to your wife and I say amazing woman, you should go, that's you right now. And if you don't think it, you come see me later and I'll straighten you out. Here's some traits of amazing women. Here we go. Number one, they inspire others. They inspire others. And you probably don't think that, but let's read a story in Judges chapter 4. It's not a well-read story in the Bible. I'm actually not going to get to the end of chapter 4. But if you want to have fun, read to the end of chapter 4. It's one of my favorite old, gro gruesome Old Testament stories. And it shows the power of women. Here we go. Now, Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lipidor. I, I know it's not Lipidor. I just enjoy that. Uh, was leading... Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. Time out. This is Old Testament. This is Middle East thinking. You guys know what happened in Afghanistan after we left, right? They went back to Middle Eastern thinking. Women, you can't go to school. You can't teach. You can't you remain uneducated. Same idea, but here's Deborah deciding cases. But she's more than that. She's also basically a general of the army at this time. And, and here we go. She sent for Barak, son of Abinoam from Kadesh in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel, commands you, go take with you 10,000 men of Naphtali and Zebulun, and I'm pretty sure those are Joseph's sons, uh, that's the, the, where the tribe came from, and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will lead, and this is another king, the enemy king, Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army with his chariots and troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. Now, time out. Back in this time, if your army didn't have chariots, you were at a huge disadvantage because the chariots, with all the sharp stuff on the side, with horses out front, they didn't even have to fight you. They would just run you over. They just, they just plow into and just kill people. So, so they're looking at these chariots and she says, God is going to lead them down there and take care of you. You're going against a superior army, but God's going to bless you. And then it continues. Barak says to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Do you hear that? This commander of these armies says to her, I'm not going to go fight unless you come with me. She was that inspirational to him. She was that important to him. She mattered that much to him. Guys, I want to make sure you're honoring your wives that way. You're honoring the women in your life that way. That you're honoring the moms in your life. By the way, most of you have more than one mom. Some of you have a work mom and a home mom. My mom, where she used to work, they used to call her Aunt B. She was everybody's work mom. He says, and she says, certainly I'll go with you. But because the course you're taking, the honor will not be yours. For the Lord will deliver Sisera, listen to this, into the hands of a woman. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. And here's what happens. They go into war and a huge storm comes up. And suddenly the advantageous chariots. Did I get that word out right? The, 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 yeah. yeah, there's a little mumbling. You drink Benadryl and try to get up here. So, so what happens is a storm comes and all the chariots get stuck and then they were easy picking and they wiped them out. And then what happens is that commander that we just talked about, he flees from that army, goes into a, 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 another uh, little city, tent city. And one of the ladies in that tent city said, come on in, you need to rest after being at war. She knew who he was. And when he came in, she gave him some milk and said, lay down right here. So he lays down. He falls asleep. And she kills him. Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> it's the only tent peg death I know of. What a way to go. 
But back then, you got to realize they don't want to be killed by a woman. There's actually a place in the Bible where a guy is too, too close to the walls of the city. A rock falls on him. He almost dies, and he basically says, somebody kill me so that woman doesn't get credit. So the same thing happens here. These women right here get credit for God saving people. They were an inspiration to others. Why do I know they're an inspiration to others? Because if you read Judges chapter 4, this is Israelite history. These are the people that they honored. These are the people that they looked back and said, be like this. Be brave, be strong, be smart, listen to God, be an inspiration. So let me ask you this question. What woman in your life has inspired you? Maybe it was a teacher. Maybe it was a neighbor. Maybe it was your mom. Maybe it was your grandmother. Maybe it was an aunt. And I want you to take just a moment right where you're at. Just close your eyes for just a second. And I want you to take a moment and just thank God for that person. Just take a moment and do that. You don't have to do it out loud. Just... Lord, we thank you for amazing women. All right, let me see what you got next, Garrett. I can't remember what's next in my notes. Your notes, I think, are different than mine. All right, number two, they sacrificed for others. They sacrificed for others. One of the most amazing things to me is Kristen will work a 12 or a 14-hour shift. She'll come home and Elise does what I always did. Hey, Mom, I have this project due next week, next month. Next year, no, no, nay, nay, right, tomorrow. And Kristen would sit up with Elise hour after hour. When I was a kid and I would come home, I would say, Mom, this paper's due tomorrow. Now, my mom taught typing. She could type almost 100 words a minute, and I could type one word a minute. And so she would type my papers for me and help me. And I cannot tell you the number of nights that the day before it was due, I said to Mom, help. You could hear that. Remember those electric typewriters they had in the teaching room that had a little ball on it and it sounded like a thousand jackhammers all night long. Right? And she would type my paper. She sacrificed her whole schedule. And I know many of you have moms in your life that did that. Some of you, like I said, maybe it wasn't your mom, but it was somebody else who did that for you. So Esther is an incredible book of the Bible. And I don't have time to read the whole story, but basically Mordecai is related to Esther. He sits at the gate. He finds out that his enemy has decided he's going to kill all the Jews. And so now he's sitting at the gate wailing and crying. And Esther sends him some clothes and basically says, "Uh, could you quit doing that? Then Mordecai goes back to her and says, Hey, Esther, we're about to all be killed. Don't think you're going to escape. And she sends word back to him, Hey, I haven't been in front of the king in 30 days. By the way, that was a death sentence. If you just showed up, you couldn't just show up and report to the king. So here's what happens. When Esther's words were reported to Mordecai, he sent back this answer. Do not think that because you're in the king's house, you alone of all the Jews will escape. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Time out. Listen. Men and women, listen. God has put you when and where on purpose. And so pay attention every day. He's got me in this job I hate for a purpose. How many of you love your job? You have the best job ever. Yeah, you get to drive a dump truck. How bad? That sounds awesome. That's like my childhood dream. Until you actually drive it, and then it's more like your childhood nightmare, right? (laughs) By the way, as a kid, I wanted to be a garbage man. I'm thinking I chose the wrong path. 
Garbage Man just sounds fun. Doesn't it sound fun? Okay, I'm sorry. Only if you can't smell. There you go. All right. (laughs) Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Listen to what she says. Go, gather together all the Jews who are in Susa and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for three days and night and day. And my attendant will fast as I do. When this is done, I'll go to the king, even though it's against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So you know what she says to the people? Let's take some time to pray. And during those three days, she came up with a great idea. So the next thing you know, she, the king, she goes and presents herself before the king. Thankfully, he holds out his scepter. If he hadn't done that, I'm sure soldiers were coming after her already, swords drawn. And so she comes to the king. Now, at that point, I would have been like, they're trying to kill us. That would have been my whole speech. But she says, I'm going to make a nice dinner, and you invite my enemy guy. She didn't call him enemy guy. She said, you invite him, and so she has dinner for them. At the end of the dinner, the king says, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. She says, I want you to come back tomorrow for dinner. Now, I'm telling you, at some point, I've already given up. These people are trying to kill me. But Esther's wise. She's smart. So Haman comes to dinner with the king, and then he's so proud after the first day, he goes and tells all his relatives how awesome he is. There's a great little interlude to the story that's even more awesome. It involves a donkey. Google it. Then they come back again. She invites Haman over. At the end of the meal this time, she says, Haman's trying to kill myself and my whole family. The king's so upset he leaves the room, runs out of the room. As he runs out of the room, Haman begs, starts begging her for his life. He's grabbing onto her, begging her. King come back, comes back in and thinks that he's attacking her queen. And so he has Haman killed. A woman who inspires us, a woman who sacrifices for us. I want you to think of that person in your life. And then I want you to say, man or woman today, God, make me more sacrificial. Lord, help me to give up my desires, my wants for you, what you want me to do. Number three, so they inspire others, they sacrifice for others. Number three, they are worshiping, not comparing. I was at a theme park the other day, and as I was at the theme park, I was sitting on a wall, and here went a parent with their kid on a leash, went by me. And I heard something that a comedian said that made me think, huh, here's what she said. I've never seen a kid on a leash that didn't need to be on a leash. See, I want to judge people by what I see, but I don't know what's going on. And sometimes we're judging people based on what we would prefer or we would do. I have not seen in the Bible yet, thou shalt not leash your children. I will tell you, I've never leashed my kids officially. I, I have held very tightly onto their hands. And Ricky will tell you, one time when we were in Washington, D.C., he broke free from my hand and almost got hit by a car. So we bought a leash. No, I'm just kidding. We didn't. Sometimes we're so busy looking at other people that we're not paying attention to what God wants us to do. That's the story of Mary and Martha that we're going to pick up here. So Mary has a sister, excuse me, Martha has a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Do you hear a word in there a few times? Me, 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 me. Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered. You're worried and upset about many things, but only few are needed, or indeed, only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. There's a story I remember about my childhood. I've told it in church probably 50 times. I'm getting old. If I fall down, people come running, Denise. That's the difference. 
You know when you're young and old, right? You've heard that? When you're young and you fall down, people laugh. When you're old and you fall down, people come running to help you. I've moved from young to old. I can tell you right now, if I fell down today, everybody would run up. So I've told this story over and over again. My mom, when we were kids, we went to Carowinds, and there was this roller coaster that looked like a train, and I convinced my mom it was a train. She got on the train, and it was a roller coaster, and you could hear her around the whole park. Ooh, ooh, and she reminded me last night, and you know I had my eyes closed the whole time. Ooh. By the way, I posted a picture on Instagram of me on a roller coaster, very similar to my mom's experience, just so you know. Okay, so, so I tell that story, like I've always told it. About a year ago, she says to me, Eric, I, I never told you something. I knew it wasn't a train. I just knew your brother was with your cousin, and I didn't want you to have to go by yourself. I know some of you haven't had somebody in your life like that. But I want you to recognize that there's ladies all around us who do that kind of thing all the time. Who go out of their way to sacrifice what they have to make their children better or even to make somebody else's children better. See, Jackie Brantley was adopted by her aunt who had no children of her own and yet she became the best mom to Jackie. I don't know who's taken you under their wings but you need to appreciate them and encourage them, and be a blessing to them. Because I'll tell you right now, that person who inspired you is the same person the enemy is attacking today and telling them they're worthless, and they don't make a difference, and they don't matter. So I want you today to make sure if that mom in your life, whether it's a biological mom or another mom, like a work mom or whatever, I want you today to take a moment if they're still here, to send them a note. And if they're not here, to thank God that he gave you somebody who's inspirational and encouraging and sacrifices for you. The enemy will do his best to discourage you. Don't let him. Recognize that God has made you special. He wants to use you right where you are. Let's close in prayer today. Father, thank you for this time together. Thank you for your word. We thank you for all the inspirational ladies in our church. So many, so many do so much. And so, God, we just want to say thank you to you. Father, I also know that many people are discouraged today, dealing with heaviness, dealing with a loss, grieving. Lord, would you give them your grace, which you said is sufficient? Lord, I know sometimes we have more than we can handle, but the truth is you never have more than you can handle. So those things that we can't do anything about, we surrender to you today. Lord, I pray that every person in here would know that they are loved by you. In Jesus' name, amen.